Hey guys, look at this little cutie right here. This is about a month old baby from Annabelle and Phineas. And today I want to share with you the cost of operating my small skink breeding program. This episode is brought to you by Cage's Custom Reptile Enclosures, combining modern beauty with functionality to create the perfect home for your pet. Check them out at reptilecages.com. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former professional zookeeper, lifelong reptile fanatic, and blue tongue skink breeder. And you're watching Reptile Mountain TV, evidence-based, captive bred, and animal-focused. Okay guys, so first off, I don't want any sort of sympathy. I'm not looking for sympathy because of how I keep my animals and it costs me more. That's not that's not what I'm going for here. I'm just trying to explain for folks that might be interested in getting into breeding like the way I do it and want to replicate that, what the actual cost might be so you can have an idea of what to expect. I've got some skinks right now just going nuts because it's feeding time and I'm about to give them their chow. So. Guys, I have a small program comparative, comparative, compared to other breeders around. I'm one of the smallest. In fact, there's several breeders that have well over 50 to multiple hundreds of blue tongue skinks. I currently have, I've had over 50 adults. Right now, I have 21 adult breeders currently of both blue tongue, uh, Easterns and Northern blue tongue skinks combined. And I intend to keep up to 24. That's my max capacity. I actually have animals that are going to exceed that in number, and I have to break, you know, kind of uh, whittle it down to who I'm going to be keeping because I only have so much space. Because I'm preferring to keep every adult in something that's right behind me here. Those red racks that I they call them, and so these are real big money suckers and space takers and unfortunately that's kind of my plight because I like the way those th these are working so let's get into how much it costs me first we're going to talk about electricity we're going to talk then about substrate we're going to talk about food and then we're going to talk a little bit about like just the operations of running a small hobby business hobby business it's much more of a hobby than it is a business but there are some aspects that you have to that are costs and so we're going to talk about that and I will also break down for individual animal costs so if you were just to keep one blue tongue skink how much would that cost based on what I'm paying for these items so let's dig into it so let's talk about electricity the electrical cost so most uh, electrical companies bill by kilowatt hour and so there's a calculation you can find it easily online google kilowatt hour how to calculate it bam they will take care of you for getting that really easily so each one of these has approximately 220 watts per tower so there's a uvb bulb there's also a ceramic heat emitter on each one of these. Now, I don't turn off the ceramic heat emitter at night. It's on all the time. I had them turned off at night for a while, and a, mul a multitude of animals broke out with respiratory infections because it gets way cold down here in this room. It was too cold. So I leave it on all, the night, uh, all night now and all day. It's the same temp. It produces a hot spot of around 105 and a whole warm region in the 90s, which is great for a northern or even an eastern. I actually can do a little less wattage for an eastern because they can deal with a little bit cooler. But either way, each tower is approximately 220 watts. Now, I have capacity for eight towers, so that's putting close to about 1,800 watts all the time. Well, I guess the lights in the daytime go off at night, so that's the UVB coil, and that's just for more of a mental stimulation to not deprive them of something that their sensory can perceive. It's not a D3 level, synthesis level UVB. I still supplement with dietary for that, but neither here nor there, it's costing 1,800 watts for the adult animals. That's not counting the baby racks when they're up and running during baby season. That's not counting my other animals in my collection. So, 1,800 watts, you do the calculations, and one of the things about electrical companies, it's the one commodity that does not go down in price for volume. 
it actually goes up in price. So they try to give you savings if you are conserving energy, but if you're not conserving energy, like, I don't know, sucking 1800 watts every day, uh, every second of every day out of these, uh, out of these outlets, then you are definitely not on their good list. And so they charge more. So actually, unfortunately, it, it boils down to around two th between $2,200 a year to $2,600 a year just for running my electrical for my reptiles, not including the rest of my house and the normal everyday electrical use of just living. So this is about 2000 so approximately $200 a month for this operation. It is my most expensive piece. Now, if you're just having one animal and say it's 100 watts of usage, and that was on 24 hours a day, let's just say that's what you have, you're gonna be at around 12 cents per kilowatt hour, around $8 a month, or, or give or take about 80 to $90 a year about give or take so that's not too brutal if you're looking for one blue tongue skink but when you have this many it, it adds up fast now what i did is i made a, a conscious decision i wanted my animals to have light overhead light and overhead lead heating is there a particular reason i just like it uh, there's no some sort of evidence-based reason other than I know that UVB is visible to blue tongue skinks and so if they can see it I want them to have it that's one reason I give it to them and another reason is I believe that that is psychologically um, non-depriving which gives them a little bit better wellness and I believe that their overall welfare is better it's not that they're happy because they don't have the emotional capacity they don't have the brain part to actually be happy as we would define happiness they don't have the happy piece just like some people don't have certain taste buds they can't taste it it doesn't matter right so it's not about the happiness but it is about their welfare and so I've chosen to do this it's that doesn't mean that people who don't do it are evil mean bad or anything like that it's my personal preference to do it this way Unfortunately, it costs more because I've got uh, about 220 watts per tower here as opposed to here's a, a an actual rack that I use. It's a grow out rack. So this is not for my full adults. I was using it initially as a quarantine in another room for adult Easterns, which are a little bit smaller. I have provided light to them, but it is not UV, it's LED light in the back. And then they have belly heat. And because of the way that those systems work, this entire tower of seven individuals is actually only 180 watts total compared to three animals in the towers, the red rack towers at 220. So I can get double plus one on the same footprint of land for less wattage if I were to do it with like V70s or CB70s or what I've used as FB70s, Freedom Breeder, they make the best tubs. So if I wanted to, I could convert everything to that footprint of a seven stack and I could get almost, I could almost have 72 adults in the same footprint that I'm gonna be able to keep 24 adults with the same amount, with even less amount of electricity if I were to do it a cheaper way. I've chosen not to do that and that's a personal choice and I'm not making any judgments on anyone else about it and I recommend that you don't either because these folks that are doing it do truly love their animals and their animals are healthy and thriving so there's no need to make passing judgments. Other than I'm a little jealous of those who do that because they are making some serious savings compared to what I'm doing which is busting the bank but that's my fault on my choices so I could be keeping these animals at almost half the um, or well less than half the electricity and have or the same amount of electricity and almost three times the number of animals but because I'm choosing to do it this way I kind of lose out on that and I'm okay with that I'm choosing to stay small on purpose Partfully because this is a hobby. This is not going to be my business. This is not me looking to make money. Clearly, this is me enjoying caring for these animals and doing it in a fun way. So, as far as electricity goes, it's costing me around from $2,200 to $2,600 a year to maintain the adult population in the type of 
environment that they're in. Okay, so the next thing that we want to talk about is the next big money piece for me is substrate. So I've been using uh, cypress mulch for since the beginning. As long as I can remember, I, I've been using cypress mulch. Cypress mulch. I, right off the bat, I was using aspen and found that was way too dry and pulled that stuff off. Or occasionally I ran out of cypress, had to use something and used aspen for temporarily. But for the most part, I prefer cypress mulch. And unfortunately, unfortunately, Colorado, I have yet to find no float cypress mulch. Now they make a no float cypress blend. My problem in like logic and you know doing some very rudimentary SAT um, you know definitions, blend means it's a mix of something. I'm pretty sure that doesn't mean they've taken one cypress tree and another and blended it. I'm pretty sure they're meaning they've blended it with some other type of something. And that other type of something, we don't know what it is, so I cannot use the cypress blend. Now I know some keepers they do and they think it's fine, and it probably is, but I prefer to like no, no, it has to say cypress mulch. Now the reason that I have that distinction is because no float produces both cypress blend and cypress mulch. They produce both labels. So that makes me think there's a significant difference if they're going to go to the point of printing two different sets of labels and producing two different sets of product. So, but unfortunately, neither have been found, I have been able to find here in Colorado at a readily available source. You know, people go, no, just go to Lowe's or Home Depot or it's all there, yeah, man. No, it is not, it is not there. And I've looked to have it ordered and shipped in by the pallet and it still costs around $12 a bag after all of that. So, poop, I cannot use no float, so I'm not getting that benefit. So what I've been doing, well, initially I was doing forest floor from zoom in ordering it through chewy free shipping buying it in bulk and it's got it was costing about ten dollars per tub to fill of this type tub you can get more bang for your buck the other benefit of having a slightly smaller enclosure in the cb70s or the v70s or fb70s is that it takes less substrate to fill it up whereas these takes more substrate so everything is more with this set up doggone it but it is what it is because I like it so it takes about ten dollars per fill up or per per um, actual bedding change to do one animal for for me which would be if you had one animal and something similar it would be around ten dollars per um, per bedding change I change the bed uh, four times a year and then I will spot clean throughout the uh, throughout the year and then if, if necessary I will change it out an additional time but I try to just do it four times a year I typically do it in January after brumation I do it in April and then I do it in July and in October pre um, brumation as well so they've just all gotten their July changeover now I have decided to move to repti chip which is a cocoa husk based um, stuff because it's only eight dollars per change and when you're talking about 24 racks or 24 tubs and three times four times a year we're we're looking at approximately a thousand dollars a year to spend on changing out this animal whereas if you were doing it with a uh, just one animal it would probably cost you around 30 to 50 40 maybe $50 tops per year so you can get repti chip I find it cheapest on Amazon and it and with prime account it's uh, shipped free and it expands to 2.5 cubic feet so I can do one block of repti chip for 25 bucks will do an entire uh, tower whereas it would take a couple bags to do an entire tower of the 24 quart bags of Zoomed's forest floor. I wish I could get the no float. So that's one thing I'm super jealous of is the folks that are able to go buy it for three dollars a flipping bag. Oh my goodness, you are very blessed. Feel blessed, okay? Feel blessed because we're not here. We're not here. And there aren't other brands. There's there is a ton of other. Now you could use topsoil. I hate topsoil. I hate it personally. Hate it. Hate the smell. Hate the the mess. Just no, 
No, I say no, just say no. I don't like topsoil, it's personal preference. So I'm using this, I'm paying out the yang, it's approximately $1,000 a year. So adding on to the $2,600 a year for electricity, now substrate's approximately $1,000 a year. Whereas if you were having one animal, it's maybe $90 in electricity, I guess, gosh, 100 max, and maybe $50 in substrates, so you're at $150 a year for one animal versus the uh, 20 adults that I'm trying to maintain now, 24 adults eventually, will be around $3,600 a year. Now let's go on and talk about food. Okay, so feeding is a big deal. Now, feeding one individual animal, way, way cheap. It may not feel cheap if you're talking about $3 a can, but this, this can should feed an entire adult easy for a month. Easy, easy, because I take two cans and I can feed my 20 animals one in one week feeding. So if we're talking about $3 a can for this kind of food, plus adding in veggies, which is really wicked cheap and you just add it into your own food budget and it's a dollar maybe two tops so talking about these kind of foods three dollars a can for me it's six dollars a week six dollars a week times 52 we're looking at around and of course they don't eat during brumation so we get about a month or two months off there so we're looking at around three hundred dollars a year on food but that's not counting uh, importing Omni Gold from Canada because the US requires all kinds of permits for Omni Gold to be shipped directly from the UK. They're working on that, so I'm hoping that they keep doing that, guys. But and then in a Rapashi's Blue Buffet, you can buy it in different sizes, relatively inexpensive if you're doing it for just one animal. You could probably feed one animal. I would be shocked if you spent over $100 a year on one animal. I would be shocked if you had to. You could, you could easily spend 50 and that's easy, and that's it, which breaks down to maybe five bucks a month tops. So we're looking at for uh, an entire blue tongue skink with substrate and electricity and food, one individual, mm, two hundred dollars a year, maybe if that. Which we're talking that's well under twenty dollars a month, well under it. Whereas with these guys, we're looking at three hundred dollars a year for the adults now when the adults breed and they have the babies, well, the babies have to eat and they eat daily. And I go through cat food, the $2 cans of cat food every day. And it depends on how many babies. At one point I had 47. And so we were going through almost three cans of dog food or cat food every single day. And so, it, but it staggers because some babies are born early. Like I had Quaker, she gave birth to 11 in April 23rd. And then I just had a litter uh, in the 22nd of June. So, I mean, over the two months, there's been babies born. And so it varies, but it's approximately, for me, it was about two cans, depending on how many babies you have. It's about two cans a day, which is approximately $4 a day over approximately two months. So that adds up to another about 200 to $300, depending on how what types of dog foods and cat foods you're buying. So we're looking at about, for food-wise, I'm spending around five to $600 a year, including the Rapashi's Blue Buffet, adding in some vegetables, adding in Omni Gold, and of course, buying calcium supplements as well. So five to $600 on top, we're already at $3,600. So we're looking at about $4,200 in operations to keep the animals warm and cool and lit and to provide them with substrate and to provide them with food. Okay guys, so there's some incidentals here and there of course, you know, you gotta replace the, the UVB bulbs, those aren't cheap. You have to replace the ceramic heat emitters, but not that often. You have to replace the deli cups and you have to replace sometimes other items for the animals. So there's occasional maintenance. I also set aside $1,000 a year for veterinary care. Now that's a pot that I draw from. That's not like a constant cost. I don't have to, I don't usually use all of that. Um, I haven't yet. Uh, max I've spent I think was $300 one year. But it's still good to have it so I set that aside. And then other things for operations for like the business hobby side, business cards. Now you can get 
plain white business cards that you can get like 250 of them for 25 bucks. It says your name and your phone number and that's cool. And if that's what you want to do, that's totally awesome. I, I want quality. This represents me. I want to raise the level of everything associated with reptile care. And so like, I've got nice plastic business cards. Those are not cheap. I want them to, I mean, this is representing me. It's representing my hobby. I want to, I want to be remembered as either the guy that spent too much or the guy the guy that gives a heck of a lot of care. Now, yeah, you could spend more. Someone's going to probably say, well, if you didn't spend that on your business cards, you could put it into your animals. I already put in the money into my animals. There's no money getting pulled from the animals to buy the business cards, okay? it's. I mean, if anything, the money for this is being pulled from my, my Taco Bell diet or Taco Bell fund. So what do you care, right? It's probably healthier for me anyway. So... You know, quality stuff. You can also get a free website. I don't want the free website. I don't like the big banner at the bottom. I want it to look cool, clean, crisp, and professional. That's $175 a year to run the website. It's about $150 a year to do business cards like this. And, and so it, these little pieces, nickel and dime, not to mention if you're going to be shipping animals, you have to buy shipping boxes and you have to buy heat and cool packs. Now, that all gets factored into the cost of the animal, sure but it's still a piece of the overhead. It's still part of the operations. It's approximately 7 to $10 per animal with taxes, fees. If you pay through PayPal, it takes out 3%. So things add up in cost. And so operations-wise, all the little nickel and dime things that I, that I, I provide in, in my program it adds up to about fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars a year. So now we're at forty two hundred dollars a year plus fifteen to seventeen. Now we're looking at fifty seven to fifty nine, almost six thousand dollars a year to operate just twenty animals the way I operate them. Yes, there are ways to do it cheaper. And no, I don't want to do them that way. That's personal and my preference. But if you are looking at the way I've done it and you want to replicate it, just keep in mind. This is an idea of how much it costs me, approximately $6,000 a year. For me to break even with animals, I need to sell usually around 18 or so animals at the going rate to break even, and that's not counting tax money because Uncle Sam wants his share, typically. And so I always set that aside just in case Uncle Sam comes knocking. That's an important thing to do too. So. It does add up, and so just to break even with this little hobby, yeah, I have to produce. If I didn't, I'd be losing six grand a year if I produced zero animals and just kept them all as my on my own. Obviously, I would save a tiny bit of money on baby skink electricity and baby skink food, but other than that, there you go. So as far as individual, you probably won't be having a website if you're doing this on your own. You won't need business cards. So the operations side, if you're just having one as a pet, not really an issue for you probably not anyway unless you want business cards for your one skink and that's cool too uh, just keep in mind all of the uh, operational costs just do add up and i i know that other breeders do it differently and they do it their way and they're happy with it there are ways that i could find to cut corners but i don't necessarily want to not saying that the other breeders cut corners don't hear that please don't hear that because that's not what i'm saying I'm just saying that I'm doing it differently. And if I were to cut corners on certain things I'm doing, I would be uh, upset with myself because I'm cheating myself and my animals, but more myself because it's how I like to do it. Because I like to walk in, I really like to walk in and see the animal right there. I don't have to pull out the tub to see them. I hate pulling out tubs to see the animal. I can see each one of my animals as I walk in free and clear. They get light, they get heat and they're in a tub which I like because I hate cleaning glass <laughs> I hate cleaning glass absolutely if they if the law came down and said you have to keep all your blue tongues in glass terrariums I would get rid of all but one I would straight up I'd be like deuces guys I'll see you later I hate cleaning glass I am not playing you guys have fun somewhere else in the world but anyway neither here nor there guys um, that kind of covers the costs well guys, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate you guys. I hope that this gives you a kind of an idea of maybe what to expect if you're looking to get into it and at least keep them like mine. And there's other ways to keep them of course as well. And I hope that you enjoy this video and that you enjoy and check out some of my other videos. 
and thank you to my patrons. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are amazing. And I'm looking at this little guy giving me the tongue. <laughs> and um, guys, thanks patrons. Thank you subscribers. Make sure you hit the like button if you like this, guys, because that actually helps the alg algorithm with YouTube and actually spreads the word. So if you like some of my videos, make sure you're hitting the like button because that tells YouTube to share it with other people who might be able to see it. Skink just peed all over my foot. So I'm going to talk to you later. I'm going to go dry off my foot. And as always, remember, opinion is not fact.